Hey guys, welcome to another Q&A video. In our last Q&A, we answered your questions about travel, and in this Q&A, we're gonna answer your questions about van life. And if you're new here, my name's Adam. And I'm Catherine, and we also have a pup named Kona. And for the last seven months before COVID-19, we were traveling full-time in our Sprinter van that we converted ourselves, but we're now here in Austin at my parents' house just waiting for it to be safe to travel again. We're gonna try to keep this Q&A shorter than our last <laughs> Q&A, but we just get excited about talking about this stuff, get a bit chatty, so if you're short on time, we're gonna leave the questions with the timestamps below. So let's get started. First question is, why did you decide to do van life? Before we moved into the van, we lived in Seattle and we were out every weekend exploring all the little towns around Vancouver, Portland, everywhere, all kinds of hikes. And I'm not joking when I say every weekend. Yeah, we was, were never home. <laughs> yeah, so we just wanted to be able to do that all the time and all across the country so yeah so we decided we wanted to travel full time but we have a dog named Kona that we mentioned earlier and we couldn't go abroad indefinitely like some people do that would have been great but we wanted to keep our little family together so we had to look into options where we could have our dog Kona with us so we looked into our first idea was like a little teardrop trailer mm -hmm. and then we quickly realized we wouldn't that would be too small for full-time living um, we also looked into RVs and then we thought about a van and for us the reason why we chose a van over the others is one we were able to fully customize the space to meet our exact needs and lifestyle it's something you can park in cities, you can drive it in cities, drive it in nature. Mm -hmm. It's really like vers versatile, very, versatile. Very versatile. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard word. Yeah. Um, and also we don't have to pay for campgrounds. We're fully self-contained. So it was more affordable from like a nightly cost perspective. Yeah. So that's kind of why we chose van life and a van. Yeah, I remember when we first like decided like, all right, we're gonna do a van. I was ready to like drop everything and <laughs> just get going on it. Yeah, so then we spent seven yeah. months converting this thing, which that part, it was very, very hard, yeah. but it's been totally, totally worth it. Yeah. <laughs> What's the most difficult situation you have been in while on the road? So we have four different situations that we thought of that were either difficult or weird or unique. Mm -hmm. Not really like some of them were kind of scary. I don't know. Yeah. They're just interesting. A little different than our normal day to day. Yeah. <laughs> so our first situation was right basically right when we hit the road we headed up to Grand Teton National Park. So that was kind of our first big adventure. We were there for about a week and we learned very quickly that we did the wrong gauge wires on our electrical system. Well, actually, we didn't figure that out for a while, but we started having issues very quickly. Our induction stoves were having issues. We couldn't get our hot water heater to work. So we were you know, in Grand Teton National Park, which in the summertime is beautiful. Awesome. It's like 70, 80 degrees, perfect. But at night, it's very, very cold. So when we went to take our first shower in the van, we couldn't get the hot water heater to work and it was an ice cold shower. And I'll never forget Adam's like screaming. <laughs> he was like, ah, ah, ah. It, was it, it was brutal, yeah. but there were no gyms nearby. There was nowhere else for us to shower. So we had to suck it up. And we were probably really smelly that week because we were really scared to take more yeah. showers. And then also because of the, the wire gauging issue, we were running, our battery power was running really low, really fast. Mm -hmm. or I think that was what the issue was. And yeah. so, in the middle of the night, sometimes like our alarms would go off telling us that our battery was too low or it wasn't getting enough power. Or so, I don't know, it had these alarms that the were- The voltage was low, yeah. Yeah, so we woke up one night at 2 a.m. I think and our alarms were going it. off and we we're like, what do we do? We have no idea what to do. We can't sleep with this. We're and in this awesome camping spot <laughs> and like ugh, just in the middle of the night. So we uh, got out of bed and we drove for about an hour to get our batteries up and we just drove around the dark roads of Jackson, Wyoming yep. with no plan. We were just driving all around and until we could get that alarm to shut off and we could go back to bed. It's one of those memories you'll never forget. <laughs> it was a, uh, it sucked in the moment, but now we look back and we laugh. Like that whole, the whole first month we had this issue and we eventually came back down to Austin to fix it with my dad's help. And that first month was like the, probably was, our best month yeah. on the road, to Wyoming, be honest. It was so much yeah. fun. But we didn't let those setbacks stop us. We're like, eh, it's part of the experience. Yeah, <laughs> it was all part of it, part of the fun of, learning learning about the van and learning how the power works that's yeah. like the biggest thing we've had to learn yeah <laughs> so situation number two we were in denver in november for a wedding and it was abnormally cold it was uh, it was below freezing yeah. and so i'm doing dishes and we're, number one we didn't build the van for like below freezing temperatures yeah. we didn't plan on that we were going to chase the sun you know so it's i'm doing the dishes after dinner 
and crap the pipes like freeze the the, <laughs> the uh, sink it wouldn't drain I was like oh crap what do I do and so I've always heard like freezing pipes are bad and so my dad had kept warning us about it we're yeah. like well we have no choice here we are because yeah, they're just plastic PVC pipes and so I just we just had to like ride it out through the night and hope that it didn't crack or anything um, with our sink kind of full yeah with the sink full of water and it didn't free unfreeze or defrost until about 10 or 11 the next morning but it was just as scary all the pipes were good yeah. everything's all good but it was one of those i was freaking i freak out about every little creak and moan on the road so and i'm like it's fine i worry about it way more which than is funny because in normal life before the van we were the opposite i worried about everything i'd stress yeah. about everything but since hitting the road i'm like meh it's part of the adventure <laughs> <laughs> so also while we were in colorado it was like Adam said it was abnormally cold they were getting snowstorms like earlier in the season than normal yeah. and so we stopped at a rest stop one night on our way back up to Denver and it was one degree out one degree Coldest but night felt of our like life. the negatives yeah we've never been in sing really in like low single digits for mm -hmm. sure so we you know we get the heater on and we get our uh, backpacking sleeping bags out we unzip them to make them more into blankets we put one one over us we put one over Kona's crate so she could stay warm yeah we were gonna be fine because the heater is awesome oh it's, it's working in there amazing yeah. and then at like 2 or 3 a.m. we wake up and it's heater's pretty not, cold yeah. in the van the heater's not on it's not like, working we can't anymore. hear it and we couldn't get it to turn back on it would like try and then shut off so long story short we figured out that the heater will not work if your fuel tank is below a quarter of the tank yeah, full. the line for the auxiliary line is plugged into the main fuel tank at a quarter of a tank so that you don't drain out your fuel tank with the heater yeah with whatever's hooked up to the auxiliary so the one time our heater has not worked was the one coldest night and it was just because we didn't have enough fuel if we had filled up before we would have been fine <laughs> yeah so if you're getting a sprinter that is kind of newish I don't know what year they started doing that but if it's already plumbed in just know that it's at the quarter yeah. tank so level, always so. if it's a cold night make sure you go fill up at the, yeah. the pump before yeah. you go to bed <laughs> <laughs> and then our last sticky situation was we were in Missoula Montana we were at a park we we're just working we had the window shades down it was a cool little park and we we're just working like i said and then all of a sudden these teenagers like i don't know they, they had a car 20. so they obviously were like six i think they were high schoolers yeah they pull up and i look up and i'm looking over at catherine's shoulder and i see this kid he has like a pistol in his hand and then another kid has like a big long like dagger or knife on his hip and they're just like twirling them around and playing with them and then they're like walking towards the van and they're like you know a foot from the van and we're inside the van just they parking. obviously can't see us through they the can't windows. see us the windows are super dark and they're taking pictures with our van in the background and it was and just, they're just like holding up the gun yeah. and they're, they're twirling it like yeah. we're working there and adam all of a sudden goes oh like, my god that kid has a gun yeah. and i'm like heart sinks I'm like, oh my god what's gonna happen to us like can they see us in here and but i don't know we other people walked by and drove by and they didn't seem no phased, one seemed yeah. phased so we have a few conclusions we've come to uh yeah i think we think that they were like larping or action role playing or just or playing it was like around. a fake gun it was like yeah, a, an airsoft gun. bb gun um i didn't feel too threatened they didn't seem like too threatening or menacing so i wasn't too worried but i know she was i was worried <laughs> because i mean things happen and, and i just, just kind of we were like do we leave but then they know we're in here or do we just stay yeah. and hope they don't come after us it was just a very just goofy, bizarre yeah. situation and we yeah. still don't know what to make of it but um we're, we're here we're alive <laughs> nothing happened i think they were harmless but it was just unlike any situation we've been in in the van <laughs> how has van life changed your relationship as we mentioned in our last q a our travel q a we've become more i feel like our life has become a little bit more stressful since hitting the road there's just a lot of daily things that you have to think about in the van that you don't have to think about in a house or an apartment also our job situation and income situations changed a bit so that can be a little stressful so we definitely have our more stressed out moments that we sometimes let out on each other since hitting the road but i will say we are truly the best of friends we have so much fun together and we absolutely love living in a van together. Yeah, I mean, living in a tiny space 24-7 with your significant other or with anybody moving all the time might not be for everyone, but we've just grown even closer and we are loving every yeah. minute of it. And We just, yeah. we don't get annoyed no, with the small space or, or like with being around each yeah. other all the time. I think 
the only time we get a break from each other is maybe when he's in the laundromat or in the grocery store and I'm yeah. working in the van. Like that's the yeah, or, or at the gym or in the shower or yeah, something. Yeah, that's really the only break. Like. I don't know, an hour tops per week, yeah, you know, all together. Some people will tell us like, oh God, I could never do that. I would like, my husband and I would kill each other, but yeah. like, we seriously love it. And we just yeah. have so much fun together. I don't know. And I feel like it's made us weirder. Yeah. I don't know. We, <laughs> we've gotten like goofier with all each kinds other. Of little jokes and sayings and. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you have to communicate more because you're yeah. always with each other. So yeah. I think for us, it's been a super positive experience. And even though we might have our more stressed out moments as a whole, like I, I there's no one I would rather spend my time with oh, yeah. than this guy right here. <laughs> what updates have you made to the van? So as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, we have, before COVID-19, we were on the road for seven months full time. So in that time, we've learned things that work really well in the van and things that maybe don't work as well in the van as we thought they would. So the first thing, and we've talked about this I think before, but our dog Kona went to a pretty intensive training. She actually was in training still the first month we were on the road. And when we got her back, we learned that she was gonna have to be crated anytime we're driving, um, anytime we leave her alone in the van. And then she also has like this special place bed that she needs to be on most of the time. And part of that's for safety, part of that's also just Kona needs to have like her own space where she can relax and she can't always just have the freedom to wander around and do things. Otherwise she gets herself into trouble. Mm -hmm. So when we built the van, as you might've seen in our van tour, we have this like slot right here where her crate would go. And so that way we could have her crate with us on the road. And whenever we go to an Airbnb or something, we'd have the crate, but it wouldn't be in the way. But then when we got her back, she had to be in the crate most of the time. So normally, her crate is right, right here, here. Yep. and it takes up almost the whole entryway. You have about this much of walking room to get in and out. It's, and it's a pain and it's stressful. And same thing, like we thought we'd be able to go straight in and out of here. It, you know, it takes up 80% of this and it's just like a jungle gym. Yeah, thing, I've so. tripped over it. I've said a lot of bad words at it. Um, yeah. it's, it's just been, it's, to be honest, it's the most stressful part of van life for us is having that crate. So Adam built this, we're trying to come up with other solutions and we have one but it's not really working quite yet yeah so our table you know it goes down into our bed mode and so then there's like a crawl space under there and we thought oh that'd be perfect like it's a good height and it's good width and all that so all i need to do is like build a door onto it and she can just hang out down there well i built this door and first of all it like it's the space is like 25 inches wide and so it swings in so far we put her her little memory foam mattress under there <laughs> and she loves sleeping under there at night but anyways if, if the mattress is there you can't really swing the door open and it, it swings really deep into there so what I, I it was attached to one side so it would swing so i tried like undoing that and then having it to work and just slide in but as soon as she sees the door she, like we touch yeah. it or she hears it or anything she like bolts out of there so and we're trying to figure out a solution and we do want to say she loves her crate. The crate's yeah, not like a punishment for her. She loves her crate. Yeah. She also loves the space under the bed. Mm -hmm. I think she just doesn't like that door coming down from under the bed. Yeah. So we're working on conditioning her more so she can be under there because yeah. when we have the space open, the van feels like a mansion to us. It's yeah. so much Oh yeah, bigger. <laughs> it's, it's nice and big. I mean, it, this walkway's perfect for, the whole van is just perfect for us. So yeah. um, our, our goal before we leave here, which it's been a goal the whole time is to come out here and work out here for a couple of days and like really like condition her down there. Um, but it's, it's, it's been too hot. It's been too hot. And our first couple of weeks we were here, it was nice. So that's when we should have taken advantage of it. But darn. I think we're just going to have to suck it up and, and do it. Yeah. So other than that, um, our, we have a gray water tank underneath the van and we didn't anticipate it smelling as much as it does. <laughs> and the smell is like a horrible, like rotten egg smell. And sometimes you can, if you're just in here, you can smell it. Um, but when we smell it the most, is, or when I do, is when we're driving, it just like seeps through the AC somehow. It's I don't disgusting. know. And so you're just like breathing in rotten eggs for sometimes we drive like hours and hours and it's just it's horrible. Awful. So yeah, we're think we met up with some other van friends a couple months ago and they told us about this kind of attachment that you can install that the, the liquid can go through, but then there's like a there's like flaps in there that close so that air can't come back out. And so that's what we're working on. That's another thing we're gonna work on yeah. before we get out of here to install. Um, we just, we, we haven't, I don't know, we've just been we had in to make the sure, Well, we had to make sure it would work first. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, we had enough space down there to do all the things we needed to do, yeah. and then now we actually got to do it. Yeah, <laughs> so next weekend we're going to spend some time uh, just Working doing some little some things. things in the van. So yeah. we hope it works. And then another van friend, they told us about these like lemon tablets you can put down the yeah. sink, and those do help too. They do help, but it doesn't last very long, and it's something else you got to buy, and I don't know. Yeah. And our gray water tanks, gray water tank is mostly just biodegradable soap and water. Yeah. Oh, we filter out all food particles, but yeah. there could be like some occasional food juices that yeah, make down there. Yeah, there's still the liquid that goes down. So yeah. I don't know why it smells so bad, but it's, it's a It's pain. a known thing though. Once we found <laughs> yeah. out we weren't alone, we felt better. It's a common <laughs> RV issue, yeah. And then the third thing, so we actually haven't done this yet, but it's next weekend's project, is mm -hmm. our backsplash. So if you saw our van tour, we have a a tile backsplash but it's not actually tile it's like yeah. a stick on tile it's hard to tell though like you have to take a double take we get people all the time they're like there's no way that's not real yeah. tile it looks pretty it legit. looks pretty legit yeah. Yeah. there's a few spots where you can kind of tell like where we connected the yeah. pieces but for it's the most part it's great yeah. however we've noticed in the last few months that like the first like 75 percent of the tile is a slightly different color than the other 25 percent it, it like yellowed somehow yeah, yeah. so the, it's all gray it's all supposed to be the same yeah. but it had discolored it has some a tint to it and it's not from cooking or anything uh -huh. we've researched this and no one else has this issue so what we think happened is we bought one pack of tiles to start out with and then mm -hmm. two months later we bought a second pack uh, because we didn't know we needed two yeah. and so what we're thinking happened is since they were produced so far apart that they weren't there's there like, like some an inconsistency kind of, yeah, in the production something. of them yeah so we just bought like a big pack that was hopefully all made at the same time together and we're going to reinstall it yeah. and it's not that hard but yeah, you we, have to be pretty precise we thought about doing real tile since we're here and we have the time but i think it's just i don't know we just don't want to do it we'd have to like rent the tile cutter and yeah. learn how to do something else we, we already know how to do this and it won't take that long as long as the first time it was, a, <laughs> it was an adventure the first time but so we still recommend the stick on tile it's worked great for yeah, us yeah, um great. we know some people have had in. like hit or miss experiences with it peeling up but we cook a lot and even with like the steam it's held up yeah, really really well perfect. it's just this weird just color, color issue and we're just picky and we want our home to look perfect so yeah. we're we're fixing it because we have the time so why not <laughs> what changes do you wish you could make on the van so when we first posted our van tour we got quite a few comments of people saying that we would hate the bed to table combination. They said we'd get sick of doing it and like, good luck with that. You're going to hate it. And I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was a little nervous. We would after all the people were telling us we would, but to be honest, we absolutely love it. Yeah. We love the flexibility of having a bed or having this like really large workspace and dining space. And there are some weeks we do not change it to the table, but that's okay. Like we like knowing that we could if we needed to. So if we're feeling lazy, we don't have to, but if we really want to crank out a ton of work or eat an elaborate meal, have a big <laughs> spread, <Yeah. laughs> we have the table space to do so. So for us, we love it. It takes- It ooh. takes makes, maybe a ma max of 60 seconds. It's super easy. It's super it's, easy to it's convert. It's not a problem at all. We've, I will say for me, the table size and like getting it like Put together is kind of hard I, I just can't get a good enough grip so ladies beware if you're <laughs> if you maybe make the smaller big table, yeah, yeah it might be hard but other the, than that it's easy the table's big and bulky but yeah it's it's very easy so a couple other things we get questions about a lot that we just wanted to clarify real quick is people ask us do we still like the havelock wool and the answer is yes mm -hmm. we love it it's great and then people kind of a second question to that is we did not do any rattle trap or anything in our van because the wool is supposed to be a really good like sound deadener dampener, dampener, yeah. <laughs> um, deadener, dampener I think so people ask us do we regret not putting in the rattle trap and it's hard for us to answer this because we don't know what the alternative would be like but for us like we don't experience really any noises no, besides stuff in the cabinet i think it's uh, they claim on their website that it's like a natural sound deadener so i think it it works great. I yeah. mean, we don't notice any like rattling metal that you would think, you know, yeah. a big metal box going down the road. So I think it's fine. But another thing to note is the we have the wool in the floor and we would we were hoping that it would, you know, keep the floor warm from the heat and things like that when it's cold, but it doesn't yeah. really at all. So, I mean, it probably helps a little bit with keeping heat in, but the floor is still definitely cold. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think that you're going to get heated floors or anything <laughs> unless you put something down there to heat them up. So. Yeah, I don't think we regret doing it. It's just something to set your expectations. Yeah, and then another big thing is that we wish we could change is some more ventilation. So we have a T-vent window on the sliding door here, and then we have the fan. But if you notice, that's all towards the front, and in the back, it's completely closed in. So 
we wish we could either have another T vent or two in the back or a second fan or either move the fan back. But uh, when I was putting it in, I was kind of nervous that it wasn't going to sit flush enough back there. So I was like, well, it has to go there. <laughs> and so, I was like, we should move it. And they're like, there's, no. <laughs> there's tons of people that have them in the back. It's doable. I was just kind of nervous about it. But yeah, that's a big thing that we wish. We and it works have. fine. I mean, mo we try to chase good weather. So for the most part, we're not sleeping in super hot conditions. Yeah. We do have this little fan we can plug in at night that blows right on us. And that's actually better than this fan. Yeah. So we use that on really hot nights. We just have to have enough power to run that. Yeah. I mean, we can open the back doors as well. Not at night, but during but the, the day, yeah. sitting at the park or something, and that'll, that'll help. Um, but another thing is with the inverter, you can get this remote to turn it on and off. And when we were building it, I was, I was like, I don't, why would you ever need to turn it off? It's, it's, <laughs> you want to be able to plug stuff in and turn stuff on all the time. Well, if we leave it on overnight, it, it draws a lot of our battery power and I don't know, 10, 15% of it. And that's just a pretty high cost. If we need to run that fan back there, yeah, we need to do it. It's just too hot. But so the current situation is we have to like open our bench and reach down there. It's a, kind of a hard reach to get down there or come outside and open all the back doors up and stuff and reach back there and turn it off and sometimes I'll be laid down in bed and ready to fall asleep and I'm like crap I need to turn the inverter <laughs> off. <laughs> I have to like undo the bed and it's especially awesome when we're in the middle of the Walmart parking lot and I have to go outside or something and do it. Yeah. So that's a big thing that we really wish we had but like I said when we were building it, it's a hundred something bucks and we didn't really understand why yeah, we needed it, but yeah, now we need it. Yeah, so. and we can we we know we can install it. It's just connect it, and then we'll run it up to our other stuff. It's something we can put in, but we're just we just haven't it's, yet. It's not a huge deal. We deal with this. So. But if you if you are building a van, we'd recommend getting it. Yeah, I'd recommend getting. It. I wish yeah. I did have it, but we deal with it. We survive. <laughs> so we do have a blog post from our first six months on the road, recapping kind of everything we love about our van, the products we love, the things that we wish we could change that we basically covered here, as well as any challenges we face. So if you haven't read that yet, go check that out. We will link to that below so you can give it a read. Is it safe sleeping in a van at a Walmart parking lot? So when we initially hit the road, we went west. There's plenty of public free land to park on. Then we started to head to the <laughs> east coast. There's not as much public free land that you can park on. So that's when we got our first Walmart experience. and. Yeah, it's, it, it can be interesting. <laughs> so we, we would rather, we prefer sleeping at Cracker Barrels. They're much better, but it's they're nice and safe and everything, but it can be dangerous because, I don't know if you've ever been, but they have these biscuits and they give you butter and they give you all the jams you want and it's so good and it's very <laughs> addicting and it can just add up really quick and be, be a problem. So. Yeah, so yeah, Cracker Barrels are jam, literally, yeah. jam and biscuits. The biscuits are but, so um they're not they're maybe not as frequent so sometimes we get stuck yeah. at a walmart but yeah. one thing that we do love to use to find out where to sleep at night is this app called rv parky and there's also other apps and stuff we use as well but this one's just been our go-to for the last few months mm -hmm. so on this app you can see like walmart's cracker barrels uh those travel truck stops, truck stops um yeah. different spots that typically allow people to sleep overnight and you can see if it's allowed it'll say yes or no and then you can read reviews so for us that's super important to figure out if this Cracker Barrel or Walmart's in a safe area if anyone's had issues if you read bad reviews we just don't go we'll find something else so that app has been a lifesaver we also always go in and ask or we call and ask if we can stay overnight just because we we don't want to get asked to leave in the middle of the night that's always a huge fear of ours which is why we don't stealth camp we've stealth camped once and that was not our thing because knowing someone might knock on our door like a police officer in the middle of the night yeah. we just don't want that we're rule followers so we just stay away from stealth camping so we always ask the walmart or cracker barrel for permission uh typically they're 24 7 hour walmart mm -hmm. so the cracker barrel's not but the walmarts are and that kind of makes us feel better because we know that there's people inside working at all hours mm -hmm. and maybe like security cameras and stuff so we feel a bit safer but we especially feel safer if there are other people doing it too. Yeah. We hate being the only car. Yeah, we try to call ahead. Um, you can always get through to Cracker Barrel and they'll give you a yes or no. And most of the time it's yes, it's cool. And like I said, like she said, we'll check the RV parky and we'll kind of know ahead of time. It's just kind of cover ourselves. But Walmart, you can rarely ever get through on the phone for <laughs> some reason to ask. So we'll just kind of show up and then I'll, we'll go in and buy some groceries. And I'll usually ask the cashier and they're kind of like, 
I guess. Like, <laughs> they, people do it. They don't, say, they don't ever say no, and there's other ones out there usually, so we just we just go with it. But we've, we've stayed at probably, I don't know, a good handful of Walmarts, and we've only had to leave one time. And... It, it wasn't Walmart's fault or they didn't like kick us out or anything. It was, we were laying down in bed like 10 o'clock or something. And then all these teenagers roll up with their hot rods and stuff. And they're <laughs> like, you know, they're like not doing donuts, but they're just like racing around. They got loud music going. They're yelling and There's dancing. Like people dancing. They're like partying in the Walmart parking lot. I'm, it happens in small towns all across America, I'm <laughs> sure. But it, it, that's the one time we were like, we just got to go. Yeah, we didn't, and, I'm tired. <laughs> we didn't feel unsafe per se. No, they were fine. We just felt... Just, it was they were doing it right by our van they were like the next row over and we so. just were like oh this doesn't feel right so we left and we went to a cracker barrel but yeah, eh. yeah. we'll eat the biscuits if yeah. we have to i guess yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but overall we feel very safe in our van we have a uh, the simply safe system so mm -hmm. when we're not in it we'll turn that on and we watch kono through that and all yeah. that so so we've never really felt unsafe anywhere there's no. just been some times where we feel like maybe we should move on to a different spot instead and everyone's always told us if it feels weird don't stay yeah so and that's, that's happened a couple BLM times land or whatever yeah we pulled up to like blm land and and it sounds great and we're the only ones out there and that sounds like the perfect situation but it was just kind of some spooky woods <laughs> a couple times and i was just like i don't really feel comfortable here yeah. so we just split so on our six month van life recap blog we also list a lot of the apps that we like to use to find spots at night so definitely check that out the hard part is you have to look at usually like five to get a straight yeah. answer or to get like the full picture but yeah because one app says it's a five star place some a bunch of people rated it five star but then you'll look at another app and you'll look at the exact same place and it'll be one star so and people had horrible experiences there so you gotta kind of just balance them all out it's kind of like yelp you know take it with a grain of salt look at a bunch of different resources figure out like what's the the closest to the truth you can find then try it out for yourself and it, if it feels sketchy just leave. yeah i mean <laughs> it just comes all it's it's all part of the experience i mean it's a, not a normal lifestyle so you just gotta roll with it yeah gotta be flexible <laughs> yeah. how much does van life cost compared to a more traditional life so we just want to start out our answer by saying that this is just our situation everyone's situation will be different we try to live as affordably as we can we don't really buy clothes very often we only eat out when we're filming vlogs try to cut costs as much as we can but we do have a few bills that take up a pretty large chunk of our budget like our van payment uh, we we built uh, we did the conversion in all cash but we do have a payment on the actual van that we're paying off and we also have student loans for me so we're hoping to get those both paid off in the next year or two but for now they do take up a good chunk of our budget um, overall though our expenses went down 38 percent from when we lived in our apartment in seattle but our income went down 35 percent so for us it's really just the same. the same our cost of living is about the same as seattle you know we don't spend as much but we also don't make nearly as much so it kind of balances out for us. Yeah, so kind of what bills we do have and don't have, we got rid of a car payment, uh, rent, uh, water and electricity we don't have. What we do have, we have the van payment, so that's a good chunk. Uh, our cell phone bills went up, so mm -hmm. we have data on our cell phones. Um, and then we also have a hotspot that we pay for, for to be able to work on the road. Um, also have higher fuel. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we, I mean, we spend a lot of money on diesel to get around, so, but, other than that, I mean, we can travel all across North America and we're, we don't have to pay for hotels, Airbnbs, other than for when we rental need something. Rental cars. Yeah, yeah, rental cars. So other than when we need to get some place for Kona if we're going on a long hike or something. So we're able to go all across America, see what we want for not free, but really pretty close. affordably, you know, if you take into account airfare and hotels and everything that if we lived in a house that we'd have to pay for. Yeah, like when we would, you know, live in Seattle, we went down to like Zion and Bryce, like we still did that ch that trip really cheap because yeah. we camped and stuff, but it was still, we used miles. We still spent, you know, probably a few hundred to a thousand dollars on that whole trip. But with the van, we're able to go places for essentially free, yeah. you know, minus like the, the food costs and stuff. It so it costs us some time and yeah. the fuel to get there. So. so although our like cost of living hasn't really gone down, that is one huge perk that does help us from a financial perspective. Mm -hmm. Did you go back and forth between a 144 wheelbase and a 170 wheelbase? The short answer is no, and that's mostly because we wanted 
our van to feel as much like a home as possible. We wanted to have some of the comforts of a home, like a fully enclosed bathroom and a shower, enough storage space, enough workspace. And we just felt that the only way we could really get all of that was to have the larger van, have more space to work with. And we actually don't have the largest van. There's an extended 170, so it's like a foot longer or so. It's a foot, a little bit yeah. more than a foot longer. Yeah. But yeah, we really didn't battle, didn't have that battle with 144 or 170. I mean, we were looking at other people's layouts and we thought like that's all the things we wanted and we had heard that it just wasn't going to be like two bigs and so it fits in parking spots and everything so we just thought it was going to be perfect i mean if we really wanted to we could probably make it fit in a 144 we've seen people that have showers and everything in there i guess we'd have to get rid of our dresser and it would just be smaller but for us three it's the perfect size and yeah. if we were just doing it on the weekend part-time kind of a thing we would definitely would have done a 144 yeah it's a bit cheaper and just you don't need as much you're not in it full time so i'd say um, if it was just the two of us a 144 could have probably worked yeah, but since we have it. kona having we the extra have space, this space right here yeah having yeah. this extra space is just yeah. really really nice if it was just one person a 144 for full time is totally doable when we were first building our van we didn't see that many showers in 170 or sorry in 144s mm -hmm. only in 170s but i think now people are putting showers in 144s yeah. so it's definitely doable if you know if it's just two people or one person 144 could work but we do like having the extra space and it's not that much of a hassle to have the longer van it yeah. fits in spots it yeah. hangs over a little yeah but. <laughs> but it's it's super comfortable it's not too big it's not too small it's yeah. just right, just right. <laughs> Was it difficult to get used to driving the 170 wheelbase? So driving the van is actually super easy. Once you're behind the wheel for a couple minutes, you kind of almost forget that it's a big giant van and it just kind of feels like a regular car. Uh, a couple precautions I take is I don't take turns as, as, as fast <laughs> as I would in a normal car. Sometimes the dresser drawers will fly open and I just don't want... To flip the van. <laughs> I don't want to flip the van and I don't want stuff just rattling everywhere. So I just take it a little slower and same thing on the highway. Um, and in towns, like I just keep extra distance in front of me. I don't want to slam on the brakes and I don't go too fast. And then another big thing that you really notice that, that it's the biggest difference between a regular car is the wind. You're driving down the highway, just the littlest, like whew, you like feel it move yeah. and it's so nerve wracking. I'm still not used to that, but that's the only drawback. Um, we have wind assist though, yeah, so it, it does, does have, help. It does have yeah. a wind assist. And so it'll kind of correct you, but man, it's so scary. <laughs> there was one time we were uh, driving from Grand Junction West back to, uh, I don't Somewhere know where, in Utah, back maybe? in Utah. Yeah. And man, we were like driving into a storm and the wind hit the van so hard. And I would have sworn that the van like picked up and like <laughs> moved over. It was Is that the time so we scary. went to that rest stop just to like wait it out? Yeah. We were so scared. <laughs> yeah, it was scary. Yeah. So to be honest, Adam drives, since we've hit the road, Adam drives 100% of the time. Um, because when he's driving, I'm always working in the passenger seat, editing vlogs, working my day job, working on writing stuff. So he's done all the driving since we hit the road. But when we were converting the van, I drove the van quite a bit. So I do have experience driving the van as well. And I always get a little nervous when I'm about to drive it just because of like blind spots and the length. But it's actually pretty easy. As soon as I start driving, I feel a lot better. How does showering work? Is daily showering an option? So in our van, we have this bathroom shower combo, otherwise known as a wet room. So we have the toilet in there and then we have the shower head above it. And then we have a shower door that closes to keep it all contained when the shower's running. So we do shower with our toilet in the bathroom. We could remove it, but it just seems like too much work. So we've always just kept it in and it's very, very small, but I think it works well for me. I think yeah, Adam has a little bit. It's of probably the perfect size for you, but I hit my head on the <laughs> ceiling. I bump into the walls when I'm doing stuff, but we make it work. The nice thing is we have like in a, a shower head. Yeah. You can like, so you don't have to like just stand under it. You can yeah. be more flexible. Yeah, so. yeah. So what we do is like, say we're going on a hike or something before we head to our camp spot for the day, I'll run back there and I'll turn on the breaker switch for the hot water heater and it draws a lot of power. It's a two and a half gallon Bosch water heater. Um, so we'll drive, I'll turn the engine on first and then I'll go do it. Um, and then we'll drive and it takes about 30 minutes for it to heat up, which is hopefully usually perfect for wherever we're going. Um, and it makes the, the, we have it set to ideal. And when we get in the shower, she's usually the one that takes the first shower. And so we can never figure out the mixer, like where's the perfect spot? Yeah. And the water gets really hot. I've screamed. I've been like, ah, like yeah. it actually burned me the first time. It yeah. hurt so bad. And I was 
frantically trying to figure out like how to turn it to get it cooler because it gets really hot yeah. which is crazy yeah and so by the time she's taking her shower it's like Set and yeah. in for me. <laughs> I'm like the guinea pig every yeah. time, <laughs> but it is just mind blowing. That you oh, can take so such cool. a hot every shower. Every time I like <laughs> pop out of the shower, I'm like, I just took a shower in this van. That's so cool. <laughs> so to go back real quick to why we turn on the van first and then the hot water heater is just yeah. the hot water heater takes about 10% of our battery, even with the van running. So our alternator charges our batteries. Yeah. So even with that happening, we still lose about 10% of our battery from the hot water heater. So we just have the van running while we heat it up. That way we lose 10% versus more. Mm -hmm. So that's why we do that. We got that tip from some van friends and that's just kind of been our process. Yeah. But the showers are really, really short. They're maybe two minutes. We have this biodegradable shampoo. It's like an all-in-one yeah. soap and we just like, lather up real quick and then rinse off while and then the get water's out. off we like yeah, rinse we, off yeah turn it off soap up scrub up turn it back on rinse off yeah and then we're, and out. Then we're out and so it's i mean it's, it's not, not the best of showers all, like but like this i don't know maybe team i but like i can't shave my legs in there like yeah. i don't have enough time for that yeah. so we go to the gym yeah yeah so we're members at planet fitness and they're all across the country so that's normally what we do. Uh, that is what we do when, when, whenever we're needing like a regular, normal, yeah. long, comfortable shower. Yeah. So thankfully we've been near Planet Fitness yeah. is a lot. So we just take our regular showers there. And then if we like happen to get sweaty and need to rinse off later, we'll use the van or if we're in a place where we don't have access to a gym, we use the van shower. So we don't use the van shower a ton. Yeah. Uh, the summer, if we're able to go to some of the places we want to, we'll definitely be using it a ton because there won't be Planet Fitnesses. But I mean, it, we're really happy we have we're it. We're super happy yeah. we have it. it is, we don't have any issues with it. There's no leaks, nothing. Like it's when we're, when we're finished and done, we just wipe down the wall so that there's not leftover like moisture and just dry it up. And the it's, only, it's good. The only complaint is it gets too, too hot, yeah. which is like a good problem. <laughs> What do your friends and family think about you living in a van and doing YouTube? So my parents have been super supportive ever since we came to them with the crazy idea to live in a van and convert it. I mean, my dad, uh, for mo most of you may know this, but my dad helped us build our van for seven months. So he's been dedicated to this process the oh, yeah. whole time. So shout out to my dad. Mm -hmm. We could never thank him enough for everything he's done for we us. We have like missing fingers <laughs> and everything and still be working on it. Yeah, yeah. So as for YouTube, my parents are also like our two guaranteed views and thumbs up on every video. And my mom loves watching our videos because she says it makes her feel like she's with us when we're away and gets to see all the things that we get up to. So yeah, our, our families have been really supportive. Um, they probably all thought we were a little crazy as did our friends when we first brought up the idea, but yeah. we are we are crazy yeah i mean everybody's <laughs> been excited and supported us in it maybe they, some people might not fully understand it but they're always still supportive and it's been nice like finding friends in the van community and in, in the youtube community to like you know bounce ideas off of and relate and ask questions and just talk about the struggles and all the extra awesome times yeah it's just such a unique lifestyle so yeah. for us finding people who can understand the lifestyle has been crucial because you know we've had moments where like we can't really talk to friends about it because they aren't going to understand like why this one situation was so stressful mm -hmm. but our van friends will get it so we've loved meeting up with people on the road we've met up with people multiple times that we've just met on instagram and every single time we sit and chat for hours oh yeah and we just, the conversations never end they they like they know the situation especially because they've probably been in that situation yeah so, so it's a lot it's, of fun it's helpful so if any of our van friends are watching yeah we love when you. we're open we need some more <laughs> yeah. friends so we, reach out i mean we have time everybody has time right now yeah maybe so we'd love and we also you know love meeting people who are about to hit the road and help them yeah, so yeah. that's really fun for us too we hope you guys enjoyed watching our van life q a we absolutely love living this lifestyle and if this quarantine period has <laughs> taught us anything it's that we just can't wait to get back out on the road and we'll never take another walmart parking lot cracker barrel overnight stay gas station coffee we'll never take it for granted again we're just so excited to get going yeah, we're feeling like recharged and ready to hit the road yeah. and make awesome videos so there's so many good things to come mm -hmm. as soon as we can hit the road again yeah. which we're not going to do until it's safe so we don't know when that'll be but when we can get ready it's gonna <laughs> be fun <laughs> But we hope this helped answer any questions you guys have about van life. If you have any other questions about van life or about our van in particular, please send us an email, comment below, send us a message on Instagram. We respond to every single comment, message, email we get. So we would love to chat with you guys. We might not have all the answers, but we'll do our best to help you <laughs> yeah. and we'll point you in the right direction. 
So again, we hope you enjoyed watching this Q&A and we'll see you next time.